Hi, I'm Liza DeGia and you're on the map, Travelistic.com's weekly show devoted to all things travel, destination, and shared experience. The green tide is riding high these days, with a war-weary culture focusing its attention on environmental activism, alternative energies, and pop culture eco-advocacy. The green movement is taking hold faster than you can say love in, as corporations line up to hawk their version of sustainability and consumers get hip to earth friendliness. How does the new consciousness impact travel? Well, recently we reported on The Real Costs, a plug-in that measures CO2 emissions resulting from air travel. Last time we checked, none of the big-name celebrities or politicians behind greenhouse advocacy were cutting back on flights. Contradictions persist. Fewer cities more accurately embody the range of green issues than New York City. With a population of over 8 million people, New York City expects to outpace its current electricity capacity by 2012. Much of that energy consumption comes from buildings collectively emitting 79% of global warming gases in the city. That output, according to the mayor's office, is as much volume of greenhouse gas as all of Portugal or Ireland. Hot, hot, hot. But due to its remarkably high rate of public transit in the face of millions of commuters and 40 million visitors per year, the Big Apple is by the numbers one of the most energy efficient cities in the United States. I recently had a chance to talk with the executive director of New York City's Neighborhood Open Space Coalition, David Lutz, giving a little perspective inside activism aimed at making the Big Apple greener and the potential impact on visiting travelers. I'm Dave Lutz. I'm the executive director of Neighborhood Open Space Coalition in New York. And uh, Neighborhood Open Space Coalition does a lot of things that have to do with the public spaces of the city. But one thing that we're particularly proud of is our work on the New York City Greenway system a system of 350 miles of trails that crisscross and lace around our city. The public space is the lungs of the city. They're the place where people come in order to breathe a little bit and, and get out of the urban congestion. And it's really hard. We're at one public space now that's nestled between a major highway and the water, yet a lot of people are using it. The first thing travelers can expect is to leave their cars somewhere and forget they own them for a week and learn to live a little bit like a New Yorker. Well, getting on a bicycle and traveling around the edge of Manhattan uh, the way people are on this path. This path combined with on-road uh, routes that are clearly marked or mostly clearly marked, I want to be very specific about that, represent a complete bicycle loop around the island of Manhattan. So if you're on this loop, you're going to see a lot of interesting things. I think when people rely too much on motorized transportation to get from place to place in this town, they're missing the contact with the people that they would have here. Uh, they're missing the a sense of the way people live. The Brooklyn Queens Greenway extends from Coney Island to Prospect Park, uh, to Queens, and to Long Island Sound without ever coming into Manhattan. So that's about 35, 40 miles of great cycling without ever coming into Manhattan. But I've watched places like this get built, and one day they'll be connected in a way that will not be perfect. We'll never have perfection in New York, but people will be able to get around comfortably without, you know, without driving, you know, on, on their own power.